This video will be a demo of Lab 14. Let's take a look at Lab 14. And this is covering um, string and math methods. Um, so these are the files that you want to create as usual, part 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And these are versions of stuff we did in class that can, are closest to get you a start. I'm just going to go ahead and run these. You can read this text here. So I'll run my correct versions. Let's start with the first part. As usual, there is a usage statement, and this is an extension of the chat program. So the chat program you gave it a string and there were a couple things that it knew about um, let's see this was the chat program um, so hi or hello how are you and name so we were going to put in some more um, if tests right here, but these other ones should still work. What is your name? My name is computer. All right, so we're going to add ones for keywords, these ones here. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this. Um, time is it? So if it sees the keyword time, it's going to say it is time for you to get a watch. Uh, let's see, my favorite color is blue. There you go, and bye-bye. Um, and class. And just like before, if you have multiple matches in here, it'll still um, print more than one thing. And there's an interesting thing that since we're just looking for the substring, if it finds the word inside of another word, it'll still print it, and that's what you should do. Just leave it like that using index of. And if there's multiple matches, this, let's see, it's time for this to be you name color class or something like that. Okay, so any of the keywords that match, it prints them in those order. So put the if statements in this order. All right, the second program is similar to the phone number program, but now we're doing email addresses. So it's looking for the at, and it's printing the part before the at as hello, and the part after the at as the sorry, as the username, and the part after as the server. If there is no at, you should print incorrect email address, specify as emailaddress.com. Remember, if you're actually going to print quotes, then you have to use the slash. So in the JavaScript, the statement, that usage statement is something like um, blah, blah. Email uh, at address.com. Okay. All right. Um, next program is calling, it's reading the first number as a float using parse float, reading the second number as an int using parse int, and then printing that number of digits after decimal point using two fixed. Uh, lab 143.js so this will be 3.14159 and say 1 it prints 3.1 if I do something like 15 10 then it's going to print 10 digits after the decimal point and that's just reading this number as a float this is an int and calling to fixed to output uh, the next one is going to read through all of the um, arguments, read them as floating point numbers, and print their square roots. 
the empty that we're copying from already loops through all of the arguments. So you want to leave that, but then instead of starting So this one here starts at zero, this loop, and that would print all the node and the name of the file as well. So start it in two instead, and you'll get all just the just the numbers that are typed in. And then what we're supposed to print uh, 149 is the square roots. So you just print the square roots, don't worry about the number of digits or anything, whatever it does um, should be fine as long as you do these as parse float. So parse float for each of those, you'll do math.square root to print all those square roots. And then the last program, part 5, takes the first thing as a integer and the second thing in quotes as a string, uh, sorry, and prints this string that number of times, and each time adds an extra space to the beginning of the to begin begin the line. So there'll be a for loop that goes from zero up to five, and will print this argument. And then also you need to be having a string that adds a space. So you have some variable that keeps the amount of space that's going to be printed, and each time in the loop you'll add one space. All right, so that's that. Let's uh, the lab check should work. Let's just check that. Actually, hold on. Let's see. I need to just stay here. Okay, let's see, lab 14. So first we need to make the directory. Then it's going to complain about not having a file, as always. Um, Let's just copy one of my files from, I have a lab 13 file there. Okay, so let's call that, this is not the right file at all, but we can see what happens. So it runs it until it gets the wrong input for something. So this is, um, that statement needs to be fixed. Okay, so this was the, let me fix that. Okay, fix a little issue in the lab check. Let's take a look now. So this says that this was the input, which is no command line arguments. So for the no command line arguments, I should print this usage statement, but my lab 13, of course, is printing this usage statement. So let's make it match. Just to see what the next error message um, looks like. So this should be, lab 14, 1, and it said here, some text. Let's see, was there a, there was a period, so I need to put the period after the some text. It's still not exactly matching, so let me stare at this for a second. Okay, the period's in the wrong place. So I have the uh, the period here, and then in the in the reference file, it put the period there. Probably this one is correct, so 
I will change that in the reference file. Go ahead and do that. Okay, change the reference file. So now let's see. Um, it, so it, it passed that now because I fixed the reference file. Now the next argument that it's trying is what time is it? And my program says this. And this is what it should say. It is time for you to get a watch. And so the reason my program is giving that usage statement is because it was from lab um, 13 one where it wanted two arguments. Okay, so then you just proceed along from there on each part. Good luck.